Hey gang, welcome back. It's been a bit. Uh, I've had a lot going on in life. I took a week's vacation with the fam, had a lot of stuff going on at work. Uh, things have been pretty chaotic, uh, but I did crank out this uh, dusty version of a tally man, so I figured I'd put the, uh, put the footage together and give you a show, and uh, we'll get right down to it. This is... Zero to 40k. Yep, I've got a cold, so I'm going to try to talk uh, the least amount possible here, but uh, this opening step is pretty important. Actually, even preceding what I'm painting here, uh, what I did to prime the tally man was I hit him all over with Chaos Black, and then from from atop, uh, I hit him with a bunch of Wraithbone, and I intentionally caked it on pretty heavy, the, the Wraithbone primer. Uh, and, and it actually ends up working out, you'll see as this goes through, uh, the point here was that there'd be a lot of medium on the top side uh, of the model, so it'd soak up a lot of paint, uh, keep it from getting too shiny, uh, and sort of help with that dusty look going forward. Um, right here, I'm basically just painting in the scroll and any other like super light spots that um, that really need uh, a strong white color. So there's a scroll, there's a sort of bone pen that he's got, uh, and then the lighter parts of the armor. Um, which is basically going to be like the legs minus the kneecaps um, and the arms minus the pauldrons. Uh, and those are going to, you'll see in time, but those will get my standard treatment of, uh, of Wraithbone and then Seraphim Sepia to give them a sort of off-white look. Our next step, and you can see obviously with the knee pads, um, I've, I've skipped on any of the white. Uh, we're using our AK grimy green slimy stuff um, and uh, it's interesting to note that on the bottom side of the model there's very little of the white undercoat uh, so it comes in super dark uh, and the hope here is that you know very much that that under shadow um, will hold through you can see uh, as I've learned to cope with in the past this slimy green stuff on top of wraith bone especially when it's thick and this stuff is soaking in like crazy right now uh, it looks very very lime greeny um, all over the place, but uh, because I've done this a few times, I know in the end it's going to work out. Now, I know I'm not using this AK stuff the right way and that's fine but i sort of came upon a happy accident at one point and i'm just sort of sticking with the method so that my um so my army has a contiguous look to it but yeah look at that glop like it just looks like swamp muck i literally have this one little dish that i'm constantly just dumping more into it there's a lot of material in it uh, that gets re-stirred up um when you add some to the dish and you know while it's not really how the stuff's supposed to be used. It's working for my army, and it's giving me this really grungy, grimy green. Um, and it's a really cool color. Yeah, look at that. Uh, you gotta really shake it, uh, which apparently I didn't do all that well the first time, but I noticed. Uh, but it has a lot of particles in it, uh, which gives the, the, the model a really interesting texture. It looks very very aged and you have to keep in mind with death guard you know some of these cats have been sitting around in the same armor for thousands of years uh in the warp and so i think thematically at least uh this is this is going to be my go-to for practically all the the green in my army Now you can see i've hit some of the white parts with seraphim sepia uh, which has given them that, that nice you know sepia um off-white color. You can also note here, there's not really any movie magic going on. Um, the green that I painted, that is just two coats of that slimy, grime, dark stuff. Um, but as it sets in, uh, as it has a little bit of time, uh, you can see that it, it darkens up nicely. Uh, you just got to get a bunch of those particles in there. And now, right now here, I'm moving on to some of the metallics. Um, for most of my army, I've been using uh, Warp Lock Bronze and Lead Belcher. This is the bronze right here. And it's really getting soaked up by all that primer right now. And so it's got a sheen to it, but it's got a lot of 
texture on it also and a bunch of the paint is just getting soaked in and so it's you can't tell right now but you'll definitely tell a little bit later as it dries um, that it gives it a very different sort of effect um, and at this point here I'm just dropping in um, lead belcher on the parts that uh, then I want to have be a little bit shinier um, you'll note as we go through here that I'm actually not going to rust this guy up normally I throw a bunch of rust um, on all the metallics I lay it on way too heavy uh, with this guy I'm not doing that um, I'm going for a dusty look rather than a rusty look um, so here I'm zipping through uh, I think he's got a plasma pistol um, a lot of the piping I'm doing in lead belcher um, so it's a, it's a different look, but I want this guy to stand out because uh, he's a special officer class uh, dude. And I'm going with sort of a different look with the dust. Uh, so we're just going to roll with it. time for some contrast and this is something I've struggled with uh, with this army from time to time um, you know there's a lot of grimy dark grim dark uh, colors that I'm using there's not a lot of bright stuff going on these are not ultramarines uh, but you want the model to have some sections that pop um, so in this case all of the cloth work on this model uh, I'm giving uh, pretty much a base with a technical paint, I keep using technical paints in the wrong ways, but I dig it. Uh, this is blood for the blood god. It is as red as it gets. It looks like legit blood. Uh, this is also, you're going to notice though, uh, it's a very shiny paint to start, but as it soaks in, um, it's going to get very much like a matte look to it. The shine is going to go away. I will dust over this whole thing. I'll dry brush um, eventually over it to to pick up some of the edges and make it look even dustier but like for what you're seeing right now it looks like shiny cape uh, or hood uh, that's all gonna in time soak in like you can see the reflection right there on it that's gonna go away as it soaks into all that uh, wraithbone primer now we're gonna start shading with a bunch of washes uh, this is mortarian grime I'm using it on all of the paper that isn't the clipboard uh, so the uh, the paper edges of the books uh, the quote-unquote purity sealish looking things hanging off of him all the little scrolly bits I'm using a little bit on the skulls uh, on the abacus um, and then here I'm gonna guess this is agrax earth shade um, here's where uh, I love this spot um, you know, we start we start just dabbing it into, um, in some cases, glomming it into the recesses so that you start getting a lot of the texture popping out. Um, you know, we're still going for that matte, dusty finish, but uh, a lot of the texture of the model starts to come out once you start doing the wash. And it takes a while to, to sort of get your head around the fact that uh, everything looks very, very flat. Um, because I'm not using, you know, a contrast method. Everything looks very flat until you get to this stage. You just have to, you know, kind of cross your fingers a bit. Uh, you can also see here the hood is starting to, I mean, it's it's dry to the touch, but it's, it's starting to get a little less shiny as that paint keeps soaking into the primer. And now we get to the scary part. You know, we painted up this whole model and this guy, his whole job is tallying numbers. And he's got this blank clipboard. And so I've got a super tiny brush 
and this is black on white so like you really don't want to screw it up I'm not going for anything crazy here I'm just trying to get some like interesting looking uh, you know warp driven symbology on there without screwing it up obviously if I do something terrible here I can just go back and paint the daylights out of it white again and do it over um, but this is like super gentle work and obviously I'm not paying attention at all to where this thing is in the camera um, I'm just trying to keep my hands from shaking right now it's being like super deliberate very gentle and just like stroke by stroke a little dab of, of paint and just get a little bit of stuff on there it ended up working out I'm very pleased with it uh, but it was yeah, this is a nerve-wracking part. So what's this horrifying glob of black, you say? Well, uh, this model comes with a little lord. Basically, the tally man has a little lord that follows him with a, a few scrolls and a, and a, a piece of fabric. Um, and so th this thing that you really can't tell what it is right now um, is that little extra model that's going to go on the base. And it'll become a little bit more apparent as I add uh, this is probably Bugman's glow for a flesh color to it. But basically, I just stuck it on the stand uh, and primed it real quick. These models that are for like officer classes generally have some extra stuff with them. You guys definitely noticed that when I was working on the Plague Marine Champions as well. Uh, so right now I'm just painting this guy in with some flesh uh, and eventually in a couple minutes we'll, we'll attach him to the base um, and then put some texture on the base and we'll be pretty close to done. Now we're going to base this guy. Uh, you'll notice that the, the colors are pretty muted on the model. I did dry brush it a little bit along the edges um, with some light color, but honestly the, the hefty amount of primer pretty much did 90% of the work um, to mute this guy out. Um, it, this is after a night 
the full might of drying. You can see here I've got my little tweezers for this little lord guy to stick him on there. He's basically just going to be following the tally man around uh, as his little secretary. Um, but the the paint on the model itself is really muted. Uh, you'll note that on the little lord, he's not very muted, uh, and that's because he didn't get the same primer treatment. Uh, I didn't want him to look the same. I wanted him to be a little bit shinier, a little bit brighter, because uh, he's not the same guy. He's not the dusty old tally man. Um, so yeah, right here, I'm just sticking him behind as a follower, and uh, now we'll get into adding some, some muck to the base. Uh, this big tub of uh, Viejo diorama effect stuff uh, is just a straight up go-to. I used it on the Plague Burst Crawler treads. Uh, I'm going to end up using it a lot if you get a whole tub of it. Why not? Um, it stays pretty moist in there as long as you keep the cap on. Uh, you'll also note that is a dentist tool, which I highly recommend. You go on Amazon or wherever and, and pick some up for probably... 10 to 15 dollars you can get a set of five to ten of these guys and they're really good for basing um, because they have different shapes on the end you'll see that this side is like a spatula the other side uh, is a little bit more like an arrowhead so you can sort of nudge this glop into the little uh, spaces between that are a little bit tough to reach um, and this stuff is cool because it's uh, it's very smooth but textured and it dries over time, so yeah, this is the other side that's more of an arrowhead, so I can get in there between his feet and stuff like that. Um, the the basing material dries pretty slowly until it doesn't. Uh, so it dries completely, uh, but it gives you a little bit of room to play where you can sort of glop a bunch of stuff in, and then it's still soft enough to kind of mush around a little bit uh, in a second pass. Uh, but then once you leave it for a while, it, it sets really nice and solid. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty much just gonna, I don't know, I'll probably never get through this whole tub of stuff. Um, but you can see here, basically, I just take a big scoop and, and get it on the side there and then use the other side to sort of smoosh things in. And here's the results. Uh, you can see that I used a lot of similar techniques uh, that I've used previously in the rest of my army, but this time not a ton of rust, in fact none. Uh, you know, dust instead of rust. Uh, you can see that he just kind of looks old and weathered like he's been sitting in a library in the base of some ugly ship out in the warp for god knows how long. Um, very cool model and uh, thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.